So my main question is how can we, um, in the 21st century race, educate school our kids to avoid what has been, uh, what has happened in the, the streets of London last weeks, on the one hand, and on the, to, to avoid the violence, but also the, the, the looting and, and uh, the robbing in the, in the streets of, uh, of British cities, but also to avoid the looting and the robbing on the top levels of our society of investment banks and corporations. How can we raise our kids in a fashion that they, are, uh, they can adapt to a new world in which ecology is very important and in which uh, the hyper-individualism that destroyed, in a sense, our sense of belonging and community has been, uh, can be redefined. And my main question is, and that's an educational question, is how can we redefine the scale on which kids can uh, become responsible for what they are doing? We live in a world that uh, uh, is immaterial. The kids can uh, uh, communicate with each other uh, all over the world. They uh, can game with each other and have nine lives. In the old days we had one life, we have nine lives. So violence is a very specific thing. There is no experience of violence or there is a very digital experience of violence. So that was my main question when I, in, uh, back in uh, 2004, uh, designed a, um, a lecture for the city of Rotterdam in analyzing the situation in Rotterdam. Rotterdam is a very specific situation. We've got a lot of uh, socially, uh, social, economically deprived uh, neighborhoods, like in Amsterdam, the, the Kolekit, we have Bloemhof. Uh, neighborhoods that are uh, quite violent, in which kids uh, do not really have a, um, a good start. So I um, developed an idea, and I named that idea Skill City, Rotterdam Skill City. And the idea was quite simple. Uh, the way kids are trained in our educational system is quite deploring, I think. Kids are, in a natural way, interested in a lot of things. They are curious, they are interested, and in a way they are, they de are decoded from being interested. So, my idea was to uh, find an entrance to these this curiousness and the creativity and the main issue uh, that I uh, thought would help was the idea of skill, craftsmanship. Craftsmanship is a very, uh, uh, in Rotterdam it's very important because the, the, the professional level of Rotterdam, which, is a, which was a harbour city, is middle professional uh, education. And the big, the jobs that are created in Rotterdam are on a professional level, on a technical scale and in medical care. And nowadays, the market and the educational system are no longer connected, as a, real, a result of which there is a lot of uh, unemployment, while at the same time there are a lot of jobs that have to be, uh, uh, to be done. So what I uh, more or less developed was the idea that if you want to change the attitude of people and their behavior, you have to start very early. And so we developed this idea of uh, intervening in the school system on primary schools, then uh, extending this to a, uh, uh, via the uh, secondary schools and professional education, uh, via, via training and uh, internships and trainees, stages in Dutch, and then to implement this uh, as a sustainable craftsmanship uh, as a result of which people, uh, young youngsters, could choose in a more explicit and more conscious way the way they want to, uh, to extend their meaningful lives with the jobs. So we started this in 2008 um, on a primary school in Bloemhof. And we called this a physical integrity. The whole project uh, is uh, scientifically monitored and we have ended it this year for three years. And what we did was the following. The, the, the idea is that the kids have to uh, get an experience of violence. They have to acknowledge the fact that everything that they share has been created by someone else. And the idea that all that they are doing has e effects on other people. 
this is very hard to capture when you tell them. But once you create a system in which this is materially effectuated, then something happens. That's what we did. So what we did uh, on the basis of an idea of interest, and I take the word interest very uh, uh, literally. Interest means being in between. So what we, what we developed was an idea that we are not going to intervene on the individuals, but on the relations of individuals. So we cultivated these relations, and we did it in, in four uh, trajectories. The first is all the kids uh, were, uh, uh, got the possibility to, to uh, do martial arts, judo, in this way. So judo. Uh, that has to do with energy and with spending energy. The second was that we intervened in their diets. The, all the kids at school eat in between uh, uh, in, uh, at lunchtime and they get a warm lunch with fresh fruit and fresh vegetables and meat. But they have to learn how to prepare the food because they have to have, get the experience that someone has been investing in the food. And once you say, I don't want to eat it, you say something about someone else. And then, because all the uh, kids think that the food comes from a supermarket, we had to uh, extend, the, uh, the extend the experience by gardening and having them, giving them the possibility to grow their own food. So what we did is making an ecological circle. They're all doing sports, and that's very important because a lot of those kids, four, uh, three out of five uh, kids are obese, uh, are, are too heavy for their, uh, for, their, uh, uh, for their age. So first they have to do the sports, then they have to uh, uh, communally, in between the, 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 the two uh, parts of the day, eat. They have to learn how to prepare the food, and they have to uh, grow the food themselves. And on top of that, the, the, the highest groups, six, seven, and eight, get philosophy. So by giving them philosophy, we could uh, learn them to develop another skill. So what we, uh, in the end, did is skilling them on three levels, on a physical level, on a social level, and on a mental level. As a result of which, uh, we more or less uh, could, could use the different activities to reflect upon each other and find the interests of different kids in one of those skills. Because the idea behind this, and we see them, th this is what happened after one and a half year. When we started, nobody wanted to eat anything. The Turkish guys and uh, girls wanted to eat Turkish, the Moroccan wanted to eat Moroccan. Everything was very uh, uh, close in and, and very, uh, well, they, they didn't really get into the idea. So we invited the mothers in the school and asked them to assist. And uh, after one year, the, the school had 200 uh, children. And after the year later, uh, the school had grown to 300 children. So in a way, it buzzed around, you know? So this is a school where they do all those kind of things. The result was that they, uh, after one and a half year, we had a infrastructure of eating, of sporting, of philosophy, and after another half year, the gardens were uh, made ready by the building corporations. Uh, we work with Vestia, which is a big building corporation, and they uh, uh, they uh, um, they rebuilt uh, locations, waste locations in the neighborhood into uh, gardens. So eventually, we created a circle. They became aware of uh, their uh, energy and of sporting and of the violence in, in, in doing judo, for instance. So they, they more or less explored the limits of what they were able to do. And of course, there were a lot of, uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, there were a lot of uh, discussions uh, with the teachers. Can we really let a, a Muslim young girl uh, do judo with an Antillian guy? 
Yeah, so there's a lot of, there were a lot of objections. Well, we get a lot of trouble with, with the parents. We stopped the discussions and just started to do the judo. We never had any complaints. Never. Never had any complaints. So the lessons to be learned from this is that once you do it in a strict way, in a transparent way, and when you let people participate in all this, then all problems can be solved. I had a few revolts of mothers that uh, refused to do things. Once you start talking with them and they understand why you are doing it, then they even are prepared afterwards to participate. So after two years, the parents were, uh, uh, came with, they became, became very critical, but after two years, they wanted to uh, organize a special committee of mothers that uh, wanted to talk uh, about the whole policies and wanted to participate in it, which is very exceptional. Well, what you see on these photographs is in a sense uh, what I would call um, the finding the proper skill, finding the kids to get interested, and then finding their specific point of ambition. Can you appeal to them to be responsible for what they're doing? And that's our main experience. So we have been monitoring this. Uh, we started, for instance, with the food, which was very hard because it's 90% Muslim uh, part, uh, uh, population in, in, the, in the neighborhood. So we started with an iftar and invited all the parents and made the food for the parents. And they saw that we used new, new stuff and that the food was halal. So we took the first barrier, and for them this was a, a very uh, trustworthy uh, experience, and they were uh, 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 they were prepared to participate in it. We worked with youngsters from other schools, so we connected all these activities with the VMBOs, with the professional education, the ROCs, with the higher with the uh, uh, higher professional educations, uh, school, uh, and with the universities. And we asked a lot of uh, students to participate in this. So, for instance, in our kitchen, we have two ROCs that send their trainees to our schools and they assist with the cooking. As a result of which, a lot of different people are connecting with each other in working together and more or less get acquainted with people that they would otherwise never meet. And that's the idea behind it. Once you work together, you, are, you get connected on, a, on the way of, uh, on the level of skills, and as a result of that, the kids get experiences that they would never get. So the idea behind this model is that we are not talking about individuals. Uh, to be honest, I think our uh, consumerist hyper-individualism is really at the end of what it, uh, as far as it can get. It's collapsing completely. The problem is that we don't have a, an alternative. So our idea of community has been, uh, uh, has been digitalized, and so we are trying to find new ways of material communities. This is a way to, uh, to effectuate uh, this kind of uh, community. The, the, uh, the sense of belonging of those kids who are uh, uh, doing gardening here, uh, the, the, the sense of belonging gets stronger the moment you take them serious is in what they're doing. And this is exactly the way how we try to redefine responsibility. Because once they, are, uh, uh, once they have, the, have the experience that they are taking serious in what they're doing, you can ask them to be serious on another level as well. So what happens here is that their discipline and their uh, attention, uh, which is an invested in, for instance, the judo and the cooking, is now getting results on the level of language and of arithmetic and other uh, branches of the curriculum. So what they are doing is they learn skills, and the soft skills that are in implicit in those skills are now really becoming very valuable in their learning process. So we've been monitoring this uh, on a scientific way, on three levels. We have tried to, uh, we followed with uh, different other schools the way they physically develop themselves and how they cognitively develop themselves and how they em uh, so, uh, in, their, in an emotional, social sense develop themselves. And the result of the three years is that they have disproportionately positively developed themselves in an emotional, social way. 
these kids have become very, uh, very um, open kids. They, uh, three years ago, the ag ag aggressive level on the school was much higher than after those three years. Uh, physically, we found out that this is okay, and that they, they really get acquainted, and they are more physical in the sense that they are not afraid to touch each other. They are not afraid of uh, being touched. But um, uh, because we only give them the food in school, uh, uh, from the scientific uh, um, results, um, we could read that uh, nonetheless they become more heavy, which is a sad result after three years. But we have to find an explanation. And the explanation is that uh, when they come, come out of school, their mothers really fed them with everything that they have. <laughs> so the, 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 the consequence is that we have to upscale, and that's what we're going to no do now, upscale the whole uh, project to uh, the families and, uh, the, uh, and, and give the families information and let them try to work with dietists as, uh, so uh, uh, to change the diet of the families themselves, which is a very, very big pretension and I don't know where can, we can make it, but at least we can, because we have uh, 40 mothers in, in school, we have a high uh, degree of participation, we can at least intervene in a more direct way. Uh, cognitively, we, have, we found out that there's a slight, uh, uh, slightly they uh, uh, upgraded the, the, the CETO test uh, are upgraded slightly. But of course, after three years, you can't expect that you already have these results. I think you have to do this for eight years, and we are going on now for another four years. Uh, in order, and, and this is also uh, um, uh, implemented in six other schools in the south of Rotterdam to do this program. So this idea, what I would call uh, the idea of skilling people, giving them soft skills, but especially to, to, to give them the, uh, the, the awareness of being part of a circle, because that's the idea, ecologically and socially, being part of a circle, enhances them to cope with situ situations much easier than before. So when we go back to these big questions of the responsibility, there's not an easy answer to those questions. But one thing we found out is that if you want to change the attitude, and we have some, the first presentation also showed it in a different way, but, but if you want to change this attitude, you have to start at primary schools. And you have to involve the mothers and not the fathers, because the mothers eventually are the ones who take the decision for the kids to which schools they will be going after primary school. So once you have the mothers in the school, you have, uh, you have a, a, a high chance that the, the choices for the children that are made are more substantial and more explicit than if you have uh, fathers in the school. That's, so th this, this uh, has been adopted by the Rotterdam uh, Council as one of the uh, uh, strategies for the Brede School, as we, as we call it. And uh, in spite of the cutbacks, which are huge in Rotterdam, in spite of the cutbacks, they decided to prolong the project, which is very pro promising, I think. Okay, thank you. <laughs>